Hey guys, what the fuck is up? It's Spilly and welcome back to No Bleeps. The title just freaking says it all today because what the fuck was this week? What was last week? What is this year? Honestly, I just have so many things that are like going through my mind and happy two days post election, I guess. <laughs> At this point when I'm recording this, I do not know what the fuck happens and the only reason why I can't really record it like live time is because these things need to be done by Wednesday and it goes up on Thursday. So I'm recording this and I currently have no fucking idea how the heck the next couple of days are going to go for me or for everyone. And I don't know what the mood is going to be. All I know is that a lot of people are preparing to stay inside because they just don't know the reaction. And to me, that's honestly just really sad that we have to think about that, that the outcome of this election could be so dangerous for some people. So the fact that that is on people's minds, it's just sad and it sucks. And oh goodness. So you guys already know what the fuck happened. At least I hope you guys know what the fuck happened because at this rate, who knows how long everything is going to take. So Spilly from the future here coming in to pop in and give you guys a little update as I'm editing this. Early in the morning on Wednesday, yesterday was election day. We still don't know the results. I thought you guys would know the results, but that is not the case. And they're saying that they don't even think that we're going to get the results today. They think by Friday. I don't know, you guys. This is the most confusing thing ever. Last time was the first time that I voted like four years ago. And that is not this experience. I'm like sitting by the TV with anxiety and stress. And I feel like everyone is doing the same thing. Last night to ease my mind, I had like a little taco night just because, well, what are you going to do? I had a burrito. I had a crunch wrap. And it made my stress and anxiety go away for a couple of seconds. And I also said on Twitter that I was watching a ton of mukbangs and that's exactly how I eased my anxiety. I don't know what's gotten into me, but I just can't stop watching mukbangs. I've been watching like Steph Pappas burrito mukbangs and my anxiety is like going away. It's like a little bit of therapy for me at this point to take away this election stress. But anyways, I wanted to give you guys a little update on how my post-election day was going since I recorded this before election day, but wowie, let me tell you, everyone, anytime I go online, anytime I watch the news, stress, 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 anxiety, 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 like everyone's feeling the same way. So I want to send some good positive taco mukbang energy your way before we get into any of the rest of the stuff that we're discussing. Okay, Spilly from the future, signing out. We're going back to the podcast. I want to talk to you guys about all of the shit that happened this past week, aside from the election, because that's just like on everyone's mind. Everyone's fucking talking about the election. And I know you guys, at least a lot of you guys come to watch my channel or you guys listen to the podcast because you want an escape from all that. Or you want to know what else is going on, because when people are talking about politics so much, they're also like, I kind of need to hear what other things are going on. And although that stuff is so important and this stuff just not as much, it's more for entertainment purposes, I definitely think we could all use a dose of a recap on the things that were happening this week and then we'll get into a Q&A and that will be the podcast. But this week I figured I would bring up Halloween, things that happened with Kim Kardashian, things that people are talking about like on the internet, things that people are mad about that I didn't get to cover on my channel. You guys, there was a whole bunch of shit that went on. So first of all, I'm going to start from like the first instance of people getting upset this week. I did kind of touch on it on my channel with James Charles going to Hawaii. People were not happy about him going to Hawaii at a time like this. They felt like it was just not a good decision on his part. And there's like a conversation that I felt like I needed to touch on that I didn't get to talk about in my video. But Basically, I was getting a lot of DMs from people that lived in Hawaii and they were like, I'm just so upset that James Charles is going on vacation right now. I'm so upset that he's in Hawaii. And it sucks to know that people, you know, can't just stay home. But it's also like, it's not illegal. It's not banned. He can go to Hawaii. He can go on vacation. He has money to do so. 
And also, I think it's important to know that there are a lot of people that rely on tourism to survive and make money for their families. And some of those people are willing to start serving customers again. They're willing to start having tourists come back so they can make money so they can provide for their own families. And I think that's where it just becomes this very hard to talk about situation because people are very much like, you need to stay home. You know, don't be selfish. Don't go on a vacation right now. You should only travel for emergencies. But then, you know, I sit here and I think about how a lot of people would sacrifice a lot just to be able to provide for their families. And if that means letting tourism start back up again, I think a lot of people are willing to make those sacrifices. But, you know, that's very controversial. People don't agree with that. People think, you know, safety for everyone comes first because obviously if everything is shut down and everyone just quarantined for two weeks, then just like a lot of other places, we could be going about life very normally. But because most of the places in the U.S. are very much open, it's a lot harder to reel it in and to get control of what's going on. So it's just really hard. It's really hard. And I just, I don't know. There's so many different opinions and I feel like scared to talk about it. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad. I'm saying, you know, I feel for people that rely on like tourism for their job or people that work in restaurants that, you know, can't be open right now. If you work at a bar or anything like that, it's just so hard. It is so hard. I was able to get my hair done, which I hope you guys don't fucking cancel me for that, but it's just one lady and it was like one of four people there and three people were employees. So yeah. It's just one woman and she runs the business and she has a person that does the haircutting, she does the coloring, and there's an assistant. And I mean, I was the only one there, so there was social distancing and all this stuff and I was just asking her, we were talking because getting her hair done takes forever. I was like, you know, how have you been? She was like, we're just trying to stay afloat. We're taking less customers, obviously. And she said like at the beginning of the year, she was just trying not to psych herself out and she was trying not to freak out about everything that was going on because you just you just don't freaking know and the person that usually does my nails not even open not even open yet i don't know if they're ever going to be open so that is just that is pretty much the world that we're living in right now and everything is just so difficult and like I said, a lot of opinions, a lot of different opinions. And I really got that when I was making the James Charles video, because there were so many people that were like, do not travel. So many people that were like, let him do what he wants. He's not breaking any rules. Like in order to go to Hawaii, you guys, you can get tested. Like I think 72 hours before your trip, I looked it up on their website. And if you get tested within 72 hours and you test negative, you show up to the airport, you bring your papers, and then you'll get tested again when you arrive and you do not have to quarantine for two weeks. But prior to that, you had to do a two week quarantine in order to enter Hawaii. And so, yeah, I mean, just lots, lots of different opinions. People are saying that it's not effective. Some people are saying it's fine. It's just a whole mix of stuff. And The reason why I'm bringing this up is because literally the next day, Kim Kardashian posts that she's on vacation. And then everyone was suddenly like, people were calling out James Charles. Look at Kim Kardashian. So basically after everyone came after James Charles and were just not happy with him going on vacation, Kim Kardashian was basically like, you know what? Let me top this. Let me show you guys and really give you guys something to be upset about because you know, aside from everything, people were just like, look at James Charles wanting his money. Like, I wish everyone could just be able to like get away and escape and go on a trip, but they're trying to be safe and whatnot. Anyways, she decided for her 40th birthday that she was going to take a trip with her closest friends, which apparently was like just so many people. I heard upwards of 80 people could have been on the private jet that they rented out for a million dollars round trip. But I was just like, okay, okay, wow. So Kim tweeted a series of tweets that were very controversial and people were making fun of her so bad. But she said, 
before COVID, I don't think any of us truly appreciated what a simple luxury it was to be able to travel and be together with family and friends in a safe environment. After two weeks of multiple health screenings and asking everyone to quarantine, I surprised my closest inner circle with a trip to a private island where we could pretend things were normal for just a brief moment in time. I think the part that got to everyone was literally like being able to pretend things were normal. Like if money could buy people anything right now, I think that people would honestly wish for that, for things to be normal. I think a lot of people really want a sense of normal in their life. I saw Colin Berry tweet this out and I think I tweeted it out like a while ago when I was watching Emily in Paris, but it's starting to like mess with me that this is our new normal and seeing what things used to be like, it honestly blows my mind and it worries me. (laughs) Like for example, when I'm watching TV or I'm watching a movie, I was watching Emily in Paris and they were walking into a restaurant to go eat. And I was like, oh my God, where are their masks? How can they just walk inside of a restaurant? And then it hit me. I was like, oh no, 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 no. I'm the crazy one. This is, COVID doesn't exist in this time. It doesn't exist here. I'm just losing my mind. So I just, I feel crazy when I'm watching TV and I like cringe at the thought of people just like hanging out and partying and being so close to each other and like drinking out of the same drinks and oh my gosh it's like no wonder I've been sick a lot before because when I hang out with people you know we're just touching these tables at restaurants and drinking out of each other's drinks and we're so close to people at concerts we're like sweating on each other and now it's like I can't even like go outside without thinking I'm going to touch something and I need hand sanitizer immediately. So that's so crazy. And then also I'm starting to notice that a bunch of TV shows are starting to incorporate the pandemic into the shows. And I'm just like, oh my God, like this is wild. This is wild. Like I saw a preview for a show on CBS and it was like a some sort of courtroom. I think maybe Rise Up, I'm not sure. But they had everyone in masks. There was like plexiglass in the courtroom and I was just like, what the heck? Like honestly, what the heck? This is the wackest scenario I never would have thought in my lifetime that something like this would occur and that it would last for so long that it was going to change TV and movies forever. There's like a movie coming out. If you guys ever watched like Valentine's Day or New Year's Eve where there's like a bunch of celebrities in the movie, they're making one about the freaking pandemic. I saw KJ Apa was in the trailer for it. And I was just like, you guys, like this year, I cannot even, when my kids get older, I don't have kids, but when I have kids and they are like asking me about 2020, Everyone is going to have, like, PTSD. They're going to be like, what? No, 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 no. Don't take me back there. Also, something super crazy and kind of just, I don't know, mind-messing to think about is that I was watching this mommy vlogger, and she was saying that if, you know, her daughter grows up and they're still wearing masks, like, she'll never know a life without wearing masks. Like, she'll never know what that was like before. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, Do you guys really think masks are going to be around for like the rest of our lives? We're always going to be wearing masks. I just, I can't even picture uh, the fact that we knew what it was like before and it might never go back. That would be absolutely terrifying to me. But I will say this. This year, I like, I think everyone has been able to try and reflect on their own life and just be thankful for the smallest things in their life and appreciate family and all that but then you see things like Kim out here being able to like pretend things are normal it's like girl we all wish for a little bit of normal we all wish we could have some normal so everyone was reposting this exact tweet with like different photographs and it was freaking hilarious but yikes I mean it's a little out of touch a little bit a little out of touch. I mean, shit, I wish I could do this. I really wish I could do this. I don't know. If you guys had the money that Kim had, 
do you think you would go and do this? I don't think that I would because I would be scared as F that people are going to judge me and they were going to... I mean, it's just kind of rude. If you can do it, you can do it, you know? But also, I would definitely be taking into consideration people that can't, people that don't have jobs and all this stuff. And I, I wouldn't want to post photos and rub it in people's faces like look at me look what I can do look at my money I can pretend things are normal that's just weird to me but that's the Kardashians am I right but speaking of literally forgetting about the pandemic I think everyone on Halloween fucking forgot that we were in a pandemic look like I just you guys I was I was on Instagram there wasn't a single person that I saw that wasn't in a goddamn costume I was like where are you going where are you going I mean I dressed up but like not really I like had this plaid set and I had just like a beret and I was like okay I'm Emily in Paris that's like it I'm not going to a freaking 50 million people Halloween party there were so many people I saw partying. I was like, what the F, you guys? I'm staying home fucking eating. I'm watching a movie. Like, what? This is nuts. Like, when I tell you nuts, it's nuts. I mean, every influencer, every influencer went to a goddamn party. Like, a massive party. I don't know how these people get so lucky. Like, I just, I really do not know. I really don't know. <laughs> it blows my mind. I didn't think partying was allowed, but somehow they're just always able to do it. They're always getting away with it. Kendall Jenner had like a birthday party on Halloween and all these celebrities were there. And I'm just like, are you guys like taking a sip of your drink and getting a nose swab and then like taking another sip and then getting like a mouth swab? Like, are they just doing these tests left and right over there or something? Because I am just, I'm not understanding. I'm really not. And it's just like, I feel like so many people are like, wear your mask, wear your mask, wear your mask, stay at home, stay at home, stay at home. And then Halloween came and they were like, forget about it. Forget about it. Like, you guys, it's, it blew my mind. It was weird. So if there's like a spike soon, I'm really not even going to be surprised because it was freaking Halloween's fault. But luckily, Thanksgiving and Christmas, it's, it's not that crazy. It's not that crazy of a time. It's usually like a stay at home and eat type of time, which is more like up my alley. And that's honestly all I did on Halloween. I just ate a bunch of food. I found this like vegan place and I had this vegan breakfast burrito, but I had it for dinner and yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to talk about the craziest things and kind of vent a little bit because there were a lot of conversations and a lot of controversial things. I realize it's like a primarily a pandemic episode, but I don't know. I just wanted to chit chat with you guys because these things were happening. And also Kristen from the Vlog Squad, she's not in the Vlog Squad anymore really, but she's a Vlog Squad member. She did a video saying that she tested positive and then the video was sponsored and she was sponsored by Thrive Market. So she was kind of promoting all these like herbal supplements and things that got her through when she tested positive. And people went in on her and they were like, why are you making this a sponsored video? It just feels weird. You can't even pronounce the supplements that you're promoting to people and like people should be consulting their doctor before they promote stuff like this and people just did not like the fact that her video was sponsored of her saying that she tested positive and they felt like she was trying to say that these things from Thrive Market cured her. I felt like she was just trying to say this is what got me through it. I didn't think that she was trying to say that Thrive Market technically cures anything I didn't get that vibe but people did not like the video I'll tell you that and she was very much replying to comments and I don't know I was listening to Zane and Heath's podcast and they were saying a lot of people get really upset at them when things are sponsored and people don't really see it like tv because everyone on tv they talk about stuff on the news like local news, they talk about so many bad things. And then it's like all these commercials, like that's how they make their money. And basically it's like, if 
commercials went away and the newscasters were reading stories and then they started reading the ads. It seems weird. I get it. But I don't know. It's complicated. I get the fact that it could have been seen as her sort of saying that Thrive Market cures, but yikes. I get that this is how she makes her money. Like, this is her job, and people are going to say, if you love your job, you should just do it for free. Like, no one is going to say that about a regular desk job. So, I don't know why people say it for influencers. Like, if you love making videos so much, you should do it for free. I definitely think that there is a time and place to do sponsorships. I don't know, you guys. This is another controversial mess. I don't really know what take I have on this because I definitely don't think that people should be like, I'm going to do my job for free today. But I get that some ads just don't seem right. Anyways, you guys, let's get off of these controversial topics and I'm going to answer some questions. So in my last video, I kind of gave a breakdown on just who I am a little bit because I said the origin story of how Spilly came to be. And most recently, I've just been talking more about my boyfriend in my podcasts. And someone asked me if I live with my boyfriend. And if so, do you have the confidence to film your videos slash podcasts around him? If not, how do you manage your time with YouTube, the podcast and making time for him? So... <laughs> First of all, we do not live together, um, but the funny thing is I like have never really gotten the question of like how do you have the confidence to film or anything like that because we do hang out a lot and there have been times where I needed to do a video and we were hanging out and I am just like very shy. I'm like uncomfortable. Like I, I feel like I'm myself when I'm recording these videos, like my personality comes out and this is definitely not how I talk to like my friends. I'm like, oh my God, you guys, like, guess what? But I talk to you guys in a very fun way and I show like a lot more of my like fun personality side. I'm not like, hey, like, yeah, like this was my day. Like I'm more upbeat, you know? So to like turn it on and record it's definitely like so weird to do in front of people I usually go in my closet or I have honestly sat in my car and like recorded a voiceover or, like brought my microphone to the car and like recorded there before just because I feel more comfortable and I'm not gonna like mess up my words and it's just way easier if I am like alone so like if I gotta do it and he's here I will do it, but I'm, like, going to go into a different room and do it. Like, I definitely, if he was sitting in the room, he would not care. Like, he wouldn't judge me at all. But you guys, I would care. I would freaking care. I would just be self-conscious about it. And I wouldn't be, like, as fun or bubbly. Um, but also, because we don't live together and managing work and this just goes through, like, anything. Like, managing friends, family, and this. I just kind of have a schedule where during the day... It's like work time. He works too. So it makes it so easy. Like this is work time and then, then hang out time. And then weekends I try to keep free. I do do the Sunday special. So usually Sundays are busy for me if I'm making the video that day or I'll make it on Saturday and then I'll have a free day on Sunday. And then I try to make a video every other day. So I'm like working one day, off one day, working one day, off one day. So on my off days is when I'm able to talk on the phone with people or you know, go run errands or see my boyfriend, things like that. So it's definitely hard to manage time, but it's gotten easier the more that I've made videos because I'm able to kind of like know how long something is going to take and manage my time a little bit better. And someone asked, this is like kind of a confusing question at the end. I don't really know what they're saying, but the beginning is what is your process when it comes to pulling pictures of the people you're talking about or rather is there any process to it at all? And someone said, and then they said, do you inherently giggle at a silly photo you have to get of someone you're discussing? So I don't really know what the giggle at a silly photo you have to get of someone means. Like, I really don't try to get like bad photos of people. I'm not laughing when I'm doing it. Honestly, when I'm looking for photos to put in my videos, because most of it is photos and I'm just like talking over it, I'm just going through their video and just screenshotting, 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 screenshotting. And 
I'm I'm just like looking for them to kind of be serious because most of the topics are serious. So if I'm talking about something serious and they're smiling, it's kind of weird. So I kind of just grab very neutral or serious photos of people and I filter them out. If it looks like a good quality photo, I'll keep a screenshot. If not, I'm not going to use it in the video. I don't inherently go through people's videos and I'm like, where do they look bad? Like, that's really not it. And for screenshots, it's really just like them looking serious. Like, I don't want them smiling. So I kind of just go through their videos and screenshot. And I also take photos from Instagram. But if people don't post a lot on their Instagram, I can't just use the same like couple of photos every single time. So that's why I screenshot through videos. But I like using Instagram photos better. But I never use professional photos like from professional photographers. I really try not to do that. So if they tag a photographer, I'm not going to use it because that deserves credit. And like, if they just take it on their iPhone, that's different. Like, I, I don't feel like I'm like stealing. That's like free, fair use photographs. But if they paid a photographer to get that photograph, then me using it, it's, I feel like that you just can't do that. So I try to avoid that to avoid situations in the future. But that's really the process of getting photos for videos is really just screenshotting anything that it can and making it make sense. So Jeffree Star, I just did a video on him. His products were seen in a TJ Maxx. He did a video where he went to TJ Maxx. I was screenshotting that video like no other because it made sense. Just finding things that make sense is truly what matters and what gets me by. So as long as it makes sense, that's truly all that I'm looking for. Now, someone else said, can you talk about how you created your channel Spill Slash and in the years that you've had your channel, how your outlook on life has changed? Honestly, this channel has changed everything for me. Before I made this channel, I was literally working a job and I was being supported by my parents because I wasn't making enough money to like actually support myself and live alone and be on my own. But I was never thinking past work. I was always like, I need to get a better job. I need to boost my resume. I was like always doing things to work on getting myself somewhere where I could be on my own financially. And I didn't want to do that to my parents, but I could never think past just like that moment or that day. I couldn't think past or like grow. I just never could think about having a house. I could never think about having a family, having kids. That just was not a thought in my mind because I couldn't afford those things. I, I just never was able to picture those things being within reach in the next couple of years. And now it's like, I, I can dream of those things and I'm working towards a goal of those things. Thinking about having kids, like this is not something that's horrifying to me because I can't afford it and I can't give them the life that I want. It's like those things, I, I can do those things now. I'm able to have a family if I want a family. I'm able to provide for kids if I have kids. Like things like that, I never would have thought about just two years ago. I just feel incredibly blessed that I've been able to do this and that I'm able to now like thank my parents and buy them really amazing things and help them out and it's just changed everything for me, truly. It really, really has. And it's the biggest blessing that's ever come into my life, being able to think about my future and be able to just think about having the things that I've always wanted and having it be able to come to me sooner is like so insane to me. I just, I just never would have thought that any of this shit would have ever been possible. So I just am so thankful every single day. Every single freaking day, I feel blessed, like the luckiest girl ever. And I have you guys to thank for it. And that's just that. I need you guys to know how absolutely motherfucking thankful I am for you because this just wouldn't be possible without you guys watching my videos and supporting me and all of this. So I know this has been like the wackiest podcast, the wackiest brand. I promise you guys I have like stories for days, but this week in particular was just really weird and I felt like I couldn't just tell you guys a random story because there were a lot of things going on. This week was pretty, everyone thought it was going to be pretty shit and it kind of was a lot of anxiety, a lot of everything going on. So 
I just wanted to have a good old controversial conversation with you guys. But I'm probably going to end the podcast here, you guys, because we have talked for quite a little bit of time about a lot of different things. So I will let you guys go and we will talk next week and I'll tell you guys a story. And I hope you guys like the story. You guys should be excited to hear the story. It's a very interesting story. It's a personal story. But you guys, just get ready. I hope you guys are staying safe in your own lives. I love you guys so, so, so much. And I will talk to you in the next podcast. Bye, guys. <laughs>